This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green. We have a very, very controversial topic to discuss today, AC versus DC. And I'm talking alternating current versus direct current. You will recall, of course, the current wars. And they were current about 120 years ago, and now we're about to make them current again. Of course, I'm referring to the big epic battle between Nikolai Tesla and Thomas Edison. When Edison first was developing the, not just the light bulb, but the current through which the electricity should travel, he was an alternating current type guy, and Tesla was a direct current type guy. We'll get into that later. Uh, Tesla one, but Edison is about to come back with a bang, as will be explained by my esteemed guest, Mr. Henry Lee, CEO of ADC Energy. A D C get it? Direct current energy. So welcome very much, uh, Henry. He just flew in from Los Angeles this afternoon, but you're still looking uh, fresh as a fiddle. And I'm sure you'll be bursting with uh, direct current, or no, yes, direct current energy all through the program. So welcome, Henry. You want to uh, give a, well, why don't we put the first slide up and then you can give a little background on the, uh, the company uh, just for beginners. So. so thank you for having me, Howard. Mm -hmm. I appreciate your time and aloha to you. Um, ADC Energy. Our mission is very simple. It is two words, it is power everyone. Our mission as a business is to deploy our technology so that everybody in the world, regardless of socioeconomic status, will have mm -hmm. access to clean, green, renewable energy. That is our mission. Nothing ambitious about that. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> because there are 7.3 billion people on the face of this earth, and there are at least two, if not closer to three billion, who do not currently, currently have, or have access to electricity. Uh, one of the projects I've been working on indirectly is to get PV panels into the remote villages of the third world so that people can at least have light at night so the woman of the house can see what she's doing cooking, and kids can uh, do their homework. But I think you have a, a larger vision than that. Well, you know, the, the goal here is that if we're shooting for the moon and we miss by a little bit, we'll still mm -hmm. be in the stars. Mm -hmm. So yes, our goal is a lofty one, but I will tell you this, Howard, that you only need two things to power everyone. Mm -hmm. You need technology, you need visionaries. Mm -hmm. ADC Energy has the technology, we're in Hawaii, and we think we found a mass of visionaries. Beautiful, beautiful. Why don't we uh, jump into the first slide? And Because uh, I think we have something like 20 uh, slides here. Ah, uh, we go back to Thomas Edison, mm -hmm. and the reason we go back to him is, so picture the world back then. Um, the world knew nothing but fire as light, mm -hmm. candles, kerosene. Um, oil lamps. Mm -hmm. And then in comes Thomas Edison and he goes, I have a new form of light. I call it the light bulb. It's surrounded by glass and it's a vacuum. So what do you do? If all you know is fire as light and this mm -hmm. man comes with a piece of glass and says, I can make light, mm -hmm. what is your response? Incred well, incredulity. Well, the thing is, you now know what kind of impact the light bulb had on the world. Mm -hmm. Very few people know that Thomas Edison was working on something even more immense, and you had touched upon that, and that is DC power. However, he ran out of time. Mm -hmm. He couldn't finish that. The reason we're here in Hawaii is because ADC Energy actually finished Thomas Edison's mm -hmm. incomplete project. Few little technological improvements since Edison's day, which I'm, I'm sure you'll get into. Yeah, so the yeah. concept we're bringing mm -hmm. to Hawaii is that we're actually bringing an economy based on our technology. We consider our technology a seed 
And when we plant that seed, that seed will grow. And that's the concept. We're bringing an economy based on the technology. So ADC Energy is not here for product or anything like that. It's here to actually plant an organic seed based on brand new technology and with the, the locals assist in having it grow and deploy to power everybody. Beautiful. And here, since you're only a part-time Hawaii boy, here's a quiz for you. Where were the first incandescent lamps uh, switched on west of the Rockies? West of the Rockies. I have no clue. About a half mile from here, Iolani Palace. Really? King Kalakaua went to the World's Fair in Paris, met Edison. The two of them immediately connected, and Edison arranged for the Iolani Palace to be illuminated. Well, there you go. History repeats itself mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. our technology is actually the world shifting back to DC power. Mm -hmm. And that's because you had mentioned PV panels. The entire world is going renewable. Renewable energy, specifically solar energy, mm -hmm. is generated in DC power. And there you go. That story about the lights going off in Iolani mm -hmm, Palace. Mm -hmm. We would love to light up Iolani yeah. Palace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So why don't we uh, hop on the next uh, slide. So that slide is basically a picture of Hawaii's uh, energy world. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's a little less than 100% right now because um, Hawaii has taken on the initiative to become renewable. Yeah. But like any island nation like Australia, United Kingdom, Philippines, Hawaii's electricity and energy is based on importing oil mm -hmm. and, and coal. and. And the world is shifting from that. It, it's kind yeah. of obvious. Everybody's agreed, except for some presidents, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that the world needs renewable and is shifting to renewable, which means the world is shifting to a DC power base. And here's another quiz for you, since you're not a truly a local boy. I'm 0 for 1. <laughs> <laughs> which state in the union, on a per capita basis, has the highest infiltration of uh, PV energy, uh, photovoltaic energy. I would hazard a guess that it's Hawaii. It definitely is such that in the middle of a sunny day, we produce too much energy via PV. The utilities can't throttle back sufficiently. So something we're working on is storage, to store that in the middle of the day so we can shave the evening peak. Well, storage is a critical mm -hmm. component of our technology, and I mm -hmm. think I'm uh, directly quoting from HECO in a study that they just did, which says, storage is the holy grail of Hawaii's mm -hmm. energy future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I said it first, but uh, they're, they're catching on real, real quick here. Why don't we go to the, oh, and incidentally, we are down to about 80% or 79% oil and renewables are the other 20% plus efficiency. That's, that's my field. And that's our field too. ADC yeah. energy mm -hmm. is, is efficient. predominantly yeah. <clears throat> efficiency and specifically because we remove the inverter converter component. Precisely. Why don't we go to the next slide? So what we've done here is this is actually from uh, the Hawaii Clean Energy uh, .gov site. This is Hawaii's clean energy goals, one of the mm -hmm. most forward thinking states in the U United States. Uh, in, in fact, the world to commit mm -hmm. to 100% renewable energy by 2045. These are the clean energy goals, but we, we shifted them a little bit because we think with ADC as a technology and uh, the, the culture of Hawaii as the visionaries, we can actually uh, make Hawaii the world leader, not mm -hmm. a world mm -hmm. leader, but the world leader. And this would, in combination with the technology and visionaries, this would be a given as opposed to a maybe. Mm -hmm. Ab absolutely, and uh, Governor Ige fully, fully supports us in that. Governor Ige was the one who signed the uh, law into law the fact that we will have 100% clean energy, electrical energy by the year 2045. It's a mandate. Yeah. It's a mandate, yeah. and it's one of the very few places in the world that's made a specific legal mm -hmm. commitment to that. And we're ahead of schedule. And that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So we go to the next slide here. Ah, uh, so <laughs> I, you're one, familiar yeah. with uh, renewable energy. You're familiar with the mm -hmm. concept of the inverter. The inverter mm -hmm. is that component that that converts solar DC power into AC mm -hmm. power. In our view, the only reason 
Tesla won out with AC power is because DC power does not travel long distance. Mm -hmm. That is why you need an inverter. And I don't know if you knew this, Howard, but mm -hmm. did you know that there is a form of pollution that arises from generating solar energy? Uh, the energy that went into making the solar panels? Ah, actually, in the process itself, it's called harmonics mm -hmm. and nonlinear loads. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not a science guy, but I did my research. My research was actually vetted by the U.S. Green Build Council and mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. by NASA. The science, it, just do a little research, the science is undisputed. Mm -hmm. Inverters in solar PV arrays create what's called harmonics. Mm -hmm. Those harmonics basically create a distorted form of electricity and when you feed that back into the grid by way of back feed, mm -hmm. you're actually ruining the grid. It is a, we call it dirty energy. Mm -hmm. I've heard of that. Just to be clear about um, <clears throat> inverters, we all have our small little electric gadgets and when we plug them in, very often it's not just a straight line, but there's a little black box. And I think that's converting 120 volts down to 24 or 12 volts, whatever, you know, those Correct. little black boxes. Those are miniature inverters, just so we have a, a layman's understanding yeah, so, of uh, that. Just yeah. Kind of just to take a couple of steps back, mm -hmm. um, the world currently only knows two forms of energy transmission, AC power alternating current or DC power direct mm -hmm. current. There's only those two. ADC Energy actually created a third form of energy transmission called alternating direct current. That's what ADC mm -hmm. stands for. Mm -hmm. Under what you're saying, uh -huh. like with your AC adapter for your laptop or the solar PV panel with the mm -hmm. inverter, you have to convert back and forth, yeah. specifically yeah, because yeah, yeah. DC power does not travel long distance. Mm -hmm. That's what Edison was working on. Mm -hmm. How can I transmit DC power long distance? That's the critical issue. That's where ADC comes in. Our technology allows long distance transmission of DC power, which basically means this. You don't need to convert energy back and forth. Mm -hmm. You could go mm -hmm. straight from a solar panel, straight into storage, and distribute AC and DC throughout a facility. Yeah. We've okay. removed that inverter component altogether. All of the waste, all of the dirty energy, mm -hmm. all of the mm -hmm. issues that with storage, for example, ventilation, heating, discharging, recharging, battery life, when you don't need to convert back and forth anymore, your batteries can last a lot longer, operate at a safe temperature, and provide you with the energy that everybody thinks you can get from solar mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. but really is a, is, a, is a tough stretch right now. On that very cheery note, we need to take a break. Howard Wake Code Green, Henry Lee, back in a moment. Good afternoon again, Howard Wake, Code Green, my esteemed guest today, Henry Lee, CEO of ADC Energy, and ADC means Alternating Direct Current, a whole new concept in the electricity world. Henry, why don't we jump to the next uh, slide here? 
Yes, here uh, we are. This is a basic summary of why DC power is relevant today is because the entire world is switching to renewables, specifically solar. And because of that, solar energy is generated in DC power, but because you have to convert it, there's a lot of waste, and there's also backfeed, what I was mentioning as a quote-unquote type of pollution formed by generating solar energy. The slide in the lower left is, I believe it's 60 acres on the island of Kauai, mm -hmm. and those PV panels from my studies and, and my uh, investigation is saving the residents sometimes maybe one to two cents off their bill. Mm. But 60 acres of Kauai are gone, and that's because of inefficiency. Yeah. Whereas with DC, you could cut the acreage down to 30 acres? In, in our business model, we've created mm -hmm. what we call the on-site microgrid. Mm -hmm. So your solar panel will actually generate energy on-site, mm -hmm. store on-site, and use on-site. So yes, solar fields, solar farms are definitely relevant, mm -hmm. but actually your house is actually safely powering on-site itself. Mm -hmm. Sounds futuristic, but it is here. Let's uh, hop on to the next slide. That, that's incredible. This, this is the concept of backfeed, mm -hmm. the also known as harmonics and uh, nonlinear loads. Uh, as a, a very simple example, if you ever see the uh, traffic lights and you see the little cells popped, that's because of the backfeed and that's what's actually happening on the grid. Um, I don't know if you're aware, Howard, but uh, HECO just submitted uh, a plan to, they, they call it modernized, but it's actually a form of repair, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And the budget is $209 million. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with distribution. Uh, you know, when, when the utility lines were set, mm -hmm. nobody was really anticipating this influx of, like you said, PV panels between mm -hmm. 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And that all surging back into the utility grid does have an effect, mm -hmm. right? So our concept removes all of that all of those issues with the inverted energy feeding back into the grid. All the while reducing the energy needs by 50%. Correct, in, in efficiency mm -hmm. standards, by removing 50% to 60% mm -hmm. of waste and actually mm -hmm. keeping it, mm -hmm. you don't actually have to generate more, you just have access to more because you're not throwing it away or losing it in heat. So mm -hmm. you're actually keeping more. So the capacity you have, you have more energy available. Beautiful. And let's go to the next slide. This is exciting stuff. This quote is from um, HECO's proposal where it directly says, storage is the holy grail of Hawaii's energy future. And what you see there is mm -hmm. two critical barriers to the holy grail. One is the inverter, and two is lithium ion batteries. Uh, the easiest example is if you remember that phone that had the battery issues that mm -hmm. you can no longer mm -hmm. take on the airplane. Yeah. Uh, those are the issues with storage. However, in our system, we call it a straight DC to DC system mm -hmm. so that there is no inversion, there is no overheating, there's no lithium ion mm -hmm. issues. It's a completely different form of energy transmission. So we remove those issues. Yeah. And for a while, the airlines tried to say no phones with uh, lithium ion batteries, but that's they totally. still ask you in some airports, do yeah. you have a lithium ion battery and in your bag? They what are you ask. supposed to say? <laughs> of course I do. Yeah. <laughs> of course. So that, that's a real dilemma. I would not want to be the airline executives on that one. So let's uh, hop on to the, oh, here's our next slide. Well, this slide just basically is another concept of, <clears throat> um, th these are direct quotes from Forbes and the BBC, um, the concept of battery storage and such. Uh, you see fires, explosions, heat risk, uh, damage, and then the concept of it discharging and recharging really quick. That's the issue with lithium ion and uh, the inverter. So um, this is actually based on an interview I did with some uh, South Australian folks. Um, and I kept asking them, how much is this going to cost you? And nobody had an answer. Mm -hmm. Nobody mm -hmm. had an answer. But we, we do have, a, from HECO, we have the, or the, repair answer of $209 million. So. That, that's one. We, yeah. we, we consider mm -hmm. that a Band-Aid for the current mm -hmm. technology. Yeah. What we would propose and what we're submitting uh, to the people of Hawaii, and in fact, globally, we've now gotten a lot of global transaction mm -hmm. uh, traction. So you see Hawaii's uh, eco solution is $209 million. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That is one solution. I mean, it is a solution to do that, or 
you could remove that inverter component and have a cleaner, greener form of energy transmission. And in fact, uh, our concept is if you're going to spend $209 million to uh, repair, how about budget some of that to create a technology that can actually grow and bring revenues to the economy as well. Mm -hmm. That's our concept, is to bring an economy that can grow from the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. all, all the while reducing our dependence on foreign oil so that instead of our exporting those dollars to the oil producing nations, we keep those dollars right here. Correct. And on top of that, the concept mm -hmm. is that as our technology grows, there are many different avenues of growth mm -hmm. that the people of Hawaii could actually generate revenues from now exporting clean, green technology. Mm -hmm. Exporting over a very large, long distance. I guess well, yeah, te technically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this, this next slide is a concept of the holy grail. Those four words, solar energy without inverters, if you're in the industry, you get two reactions. One is, that's impossible. Mm -hmm. And the second is, oh my God that's possible. Mm -hmm. Those four words got us a five-hour meeting one-on-one -on -one with NASA engineers Ooh. because they really wanted to see how is it possible to do that. Mm -hmm. And so when we did our presentation, uh, we're now at a step where they've acknowledged that we've come up with a real technological breakthrough and we're going to um, collaborate with them on future developments mm -hmm. of what we could do with ADC Energy. So they may, they may do a pilot project then, or? that That's currently in the mm -hmm. works right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. That would be exciting. Well, definitely. So yeah, yeah. that concept, solar energy without inverters mm -hmm. in the renewable energy world, like I said, it's either impossible or it's possible. When you actually see it, like on our mm -hmm. website, we actually show the concept of long distance DC power. Mm -hmm. At that point, it's, oh my God, that is possible. Yeah. Well, I know that there's a plan. I don't know if the, there's been a dirt dug with this yet, but uh, Wyoming, of all places, has tremendous wind power, and there's a plan to ship that to California, which of course is power hungry, via DC. I don't know if you'd heard about that. I haven't, but it wouldn't surprise me that mm -hmm. there are multiple concepts of transmitting DC power, like a remote uh, solar farm, transmitting 500 miles, how do we do that? Um, our concept is simple, it's use what you have, use mm -hmm. it in an efficient mm -hmm. manner, why throw it away? Mm -hmm. You know, I think there was an article I read where um, China recognizes the concept yeah, of renewable yeah. en energy and high voltage DC power, and they're spending, get this, a trillion dollars mm -hmm. to create an entire new utility grid on high voltage DC power. I don't know why you would do that. <laughs> if you could use your existing system in a mm -hmm. clean, safe, efficient manner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I was in China about a year ago, and I can testify, I was there in June, this is in the Shanghai region, it gets hot. There's no, no absence of uh, solar uh, power there. Not hot, and then there's a lot of pollution. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, it, you know, everywhere in the world, you'll, mm -hmm. you'll see, like you mentioned, wind power. The United Kingdom has wind power, but they have too much wind power. They can't mm -hmm. handle it. Their grid can't handle it. Australia has wind power, but it's not generating enough. So they have to subsidize wind farms. Every part of the world has an issue, and it's really, in our view, simple solution. Mm -hmm. Use what you have in the most efficient manner possible, yeah. Yeah. and you'll yeah. be fine. Mm -hmm. You will be fine. Sounds like Ger Germany could also benefit from this with all the wind and all the solar they've got. They, they were the pioneers, the European pioneers. And you, you heard what happened in Germany, right? My, my understanding is that all of the renewable energy that Germany has, they, they can't use all of it, mm -hmm. and so they were trying to ship it out, mm -hmm. and they couldn't mm. because it was affecting the distribution yeah, lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Why don't we go to the uh, next slide here? So this is our simple business model. Mm -hmm. This is all ADC Energy does. We create a world powered by batteries, charged by the sun. Mm -hmm. The critical difference is we do not use an inverter. Mm -hmm. do not use, you do not have the heat, you do not have the back feed, you don't mm -hmm. have those safety concerns, you don't have any of those issues. It's highly efficient as a system. I, I like that uh, mission statement. The definition of a good mission statement is if you're walking down a dark alley and suddenly a masked man appears and points a gun to your head and says, what's your mission statement? You need to... <laughs> we only have two words, so it's simple. Yeah. 
Well, this is an explanation of our two critical functions. We are the only company in the world that can perform these two functions with electricity. One mm -hmm. is we can transmit AC and DC power simultaneously on existing wires, which means, Howard, in this mm -hmm. building, if it went ADC energy, your plugs could flow AC and DC power at the same time, and you would not have to swap out the wires. And then that forms the basis mm -hmm. of critical function number two, which is long distance DC power transmission without inverts. That is what Thomas Edison was and working I, on. I, I like that acronym, OMG, yeah. We've created the uh, 24 volts, mind you, to picture that, is mm -hmm. less than three nine volt batteries. We have the yeah. ability to power currently an entire building's lighting systems mm -hmm. on the equivalent voltage of less than three nine volt batteries. That is slightly so mind boggling. This, the, the concept of the ONG, the on-site microgrid, is first you start with the lights, We've created battery-powered lights, then they become solar-powered lights. You can take anywhere from 20 to 40% of your electrical use mm -hmm. off-grid. And then we add, add the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Now you're about 70 to almost 90% removing that from the utility. Mm -hmm. We don't go 100% off-grid. It's almost impossible to do that. At the same time, you want to utilize all the power that's there. Mm -hmm. So we provide uh, an efficient solution that um, provides efficiency for the consumer and mm -hmm. also takes load off of the utility. Yep, yep. And we've got time for one more slide if we've got, uh, do we have any more? I think so. Ah. ah, that is your ADC powered world mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. So if you see at the demand side, which is our current business model, each OMG, consider facilities, warehouses, mm -hmm. houses, mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. OMG is basically able to power itself. On the supply side, the utilities already are into this space. They want to do this space, the solar farms and utility scale storage, but that critical piece in the middle, the utility, mm -hmm. the transmission mm -hmm. lines, that's the critical missing function. This is where ADC Energy comes in and allows existing utility lines to be used to pipe solar farm energy, store it, and then safely transmit it to each OMG. So if you picture Puerto Rico, for example, yes, if yes. you had a series of OMGs in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. they would still be powered today. Mm -hmm. And on that very, very cheerful note, we, well, do you have any, I think you, you, you did your closing. Well, uh, yeah. always last close is, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. our website is www.adcenergy.org can actually see the two critical functions, so you can actually mm -hmm. see what we're talking about, so you know this technology exists. Mm -hmm. And on that very cheery note, thank you very much, Henry Lee, CEO of ADC Energy, back in two weeks with another cheerful show. Thank you very much.